It's a joy to welcome this morning the Reverend Dr. D.B. Kulothungan. You're going to have to forgive me if I mispronounce a number of words this morning. He was born to a Hindu family, received the Lord into his life at age 11 through a school teacher at the Christian ministry known as the Scripture Union in Chennai. He received a call from God to go to the north to preach the gospel in 1976, and from there went on to Union Biblical Seminary, established by Free Methodists, where he completed his theological studies. And then he was led by the Lord in 1981 to plant Maharashtra Village Ministries, And today, the Lord has blessed them to plant 110 churches, 500 houses of prayer in rural Maharashtra, giving leadership as now the superintendent of the Shalom Free Methodist Conference. He's also the honorable chairman for the Yavatmal College in leadership training. He is married to his wife, Elizabeth Faith, who is now the general secretary designate and a counselor, and they're blessed with two sons. Nehemiah and his wife live in Cardiff, and he, uh, his son serves as a worship coordinator at Cardiff uh, City Church and is also the executive producer for Bridge Music. His second son, Jonathan, lives in Berlin, Germany, and uses his gifts of music in the marketplace. We're excited to welcome Brother Kulo this morning, and we're so glad you're here. Please come. Thank you. We want to have a prayer together for Brother Kulo as he brings the message this morning. Our Father, we pray that now you would pour out your Holy Spirit on this, your child, a child you have blessed in abundance with gifts and ministry and calling. And we are so thankful to you, O God, that he is with us today. May he bear witness to your word and open our hearts to hear and to receive the message that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Welcome. Thank you so much. Namaste. Within a few minutes, I could feel the sense of belonging. Thank you, Pastor Greg. And I thank God, Bishop Matt Thomas, who was instrumental in linking me with this first Free Methodist Church. And I'm glad to uh, introduce my host here, Pastor uh, Vinay. Please just stand up. And Becky, they've been here for a number of years. And uh, well, uh, if only they are not there to receive me, it would have been difficult. Thank you, Vinay. And we are known for each other for several years. And we have another young girl from Yavath Mall. Uh, there we call Mother Church Free Mothers. Here you call First Church. <laughs> that Mother Church is the First Church. She is doing her studies here in uh, uh, the college nearby, Arizona. Please, you will get to know us maybe after we do the service. When I said Namaste, several of you would have flown to India in Air India. I don't know whether you did that Air India. The hair hostess there or a crew there will say, Namaskar, Namaskar, Namaskar. And I'm a crazy fellow once, I just stepped aside and said, Hey girl, you say Namaste, is you from your heart or how do you say? No sir, I'm just paid for that. <laughs> I don't mean anything, who comes and who goes. But the root word Namaste, my dear friends, come from Urdu or Sanskrit, I say. It has a meaning of, I belong to you, you belong to me, together we belong to a creator God. Shall we say Namaste now? Yes. We are people belonging to God. It's been a great feeling to come over to the first Primitive Church and uh, quickly I want to run over about the ministries that God has entrusted to us. Let's go on. There you find Maharashtra Village Ministries, which is a holistic church planting. And there is a vision, God-given clear vision over there, the mission and how that we want to, after the survey, plant churches. In Maharashtra is the second largest state in our country. We have a f- spiritual foundation. Word of God, faith, prayer, and sacrifice, without which we cannot move forward. As Paul said, 1 Corinthians 12, 15, 2 Corinthians 12, 15, he said, I rather gladly spend and be spent for the gospel. Spending is one aspect, but being spent. This is Maharashtra. Some of you are not traveled there, center of India. And Maharashtra border is kind of dividing Vindhya Satpura mountain, where we have got a lot of colorful people. And this map tells me six regions in Maharashtra. Maharashtra village ministers were able to go to the five regions now, one more region left. And I come here to remind you, some of you visited, you come back and let us fill that region also with the gospel workers. These are some pictures that you'll see, different ministries, 
children are always a welcome, welcoming people in the villages. We have ministries among the adults, church planting. They don't have a big building like this, but they worship under the tree. Baptism, even now I stand here, some 20, 30 baptisms are going on back there in home and it has become a regular feature. In spite of all the laws that you hear, conversion, anti-conversion law, God is at work. People come and declare Jesus as Lord. Look at these colorful people. They are Khatkaris. They make bricks. They live close to the Bombay and about two and a half hours. And they have to move from place to place so their children cannot go to school. So please pray for them. We are looking forward, God, to guide us. Free Methodists have definitely opened a school. Some of you may know David Yade School and Free Methodist School. It's impacting the community. So we are known for bringing transformation through education. These are some of the churches that we are helping them to build. We call them cathedral. Look at that small church. It is entirely done by the believers themselves. And this kind of activity is going on. I want you to pray. And some of you already expressed your desire. You have been there. And one or two of you told me, we are retired. So I told I'll ask the pastor, all the retired people go to India. <laughs> you can come and do the great work. We are also involved in community development. You know about set free movement, you know all those things. So literacy is one issue. And we are definitely educating them. What a great joy. First they learn to write, they write Jesus. And then medical, uh, all the missionaries, we are 200 close to missionaries, they are given training on medical. Then why is this girls' home in the very significant one when they, they lose father or a mother, they are abandoned, so we bring them and give them care and comfort. Missionary kids' home is one. When the missionaries are placed in the rural areas, they do not have opportunity to study, so we bring them to a town and educate them. Look at the school here, they enjoy. I think Sakshi was just played a short innings to be a teacher there. Well, now that all the Zoom and other things that you can even teach from here if you want, contact her and we'll be able to tell you. Three schools we have impacting about 500 close children. They are budding, you call it uh, the head of the state here, we call it there. You know, maybe people like uh, who are uh, done a great job in India, so we want them to become. So keep praying, let's go on. Yeah, this is uh, other aspect of training in the context. They cannot come to the theological institution or colleges, but we take the training to them. So people are learned everywhere. They made them strong believers and to witness. But this is near Yoth Mall. We have a training center called Fisher Submen Training Institute. Student come. 25 years we have, year after year we trained them as Fisher Submen. Now the 26 is going on. We are welcome. We dedicate the missionaries. And our bishops here, this side, like Bishop Joe James, uh, Bishop Matt Thomas, and those of them are visited. And some of you would have heard about Bishop Joseph Amish cycle from Kanyakumaru to Kashmir for the cause for Indian missions. And we were part of it for part of the time. We learned a lot. This is the last slide for you to tell. There is a great gathering of uh, believers uh, coming together, about 7,000 believers scattered. We cannot gather them all in one place. We gather in regions and they celebrate. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we will be at the maybe coffee after we go. You can ask questions. The friends are there. Thank you. We are going to go to the Word of God now. And before we go to the Word of God, yesterday I saw your website. Only yesterday I could see I was busy. I loved your theme. And today is already a reminder. We want to love and we want to connect and we want to serve. What a wonderful theme that is. We are loving people. And I want to just, uh, a musician all gone back. Sir, back home, one of my desires is the musician will constantly be with me. <laughs> So that when the Lord inspires, I'll lead them and they'll start. But sorry, I did not tell you earlier. But a simple chorus will sing together and then I'll go into the message. You may know. If you know, you join with me. If you don't know, you can learn. The words goes like this. I love you with the love of God. I can see in you the glory of my King. I love you with the love of God. In this context, you know, when you talk over a phone, when you meet, often we say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And once I went to the shop and I bought, I love you, about 100 cards. I, you are the only one I love you. My wife looked at me, what is this? You are buying 100 cards and you are telling you are the only one I <laughs> love you. What is happening? But as a children of God, we want to love everybody because Jesus loved. Amen? Would you like to join with me? Can we try that? <clears throat> I love you with the love of God. I love you with the love of God. I can see in you the glory of my King. I love you with the love of God. Shall we do together? I love you with the love of God. 
I love you with the love of God. I can see in you the glory of my King. I love you with the love of God. If you are not yet sung this song to your spouse, go and sing today. I love you with the love of God. I can see in you the glory of my King. I always have a habit of asking congregation to respond to me. Sir, if you permit me. 1 John 4.4, 4, can somebody quote without seeing the Bible? Oh, that is only for Sunday school kids. <laughs> can anybody try 1 John 4.4? 4, 4? Okay. Yes, somebody is there? Pastor will give a good gift to you. <laughs> okay, let me help you. He that is in you is greater than who that is in the world. Do you agree with me? Shall we all say it together? He that is in you is greater than who that is in the world. In India, there has been a several vaccinations, not the COVID vaccination, different kinds of vaccination. It can be chicken pox, it can be something else. But one greatest dangerous vaccination was, oh, Indian Christians, you are minorities. You cannot do anything. But now what is happening? The restlessness, my friends, I want to tell you. The majority of Indian population is afraid that the minority will become majority. Hallelujah. Because you love, you connect, and you serve, and you share the gospel. I want to thank God for all the free Mother's missions 100 years ago. They had come and planted the seed. That's how UBS has come. And I remember Klein, uh, Dr. Klein, with whom I travel. What a memory that he had. What all experience he made. So several of them who were sacrificed. Dr. Yadi, some of you may know. And they have done great work in those days. Now it's being passed down to generations. You have about four bishops now. God's doing, big day. So let us learn together what the Lord has done. Let us share what has done. And ultimately, let us grow together. Growth doesn't mean only the growing in a big size of the church. Growing means we spread over having a global vision. Global vision. We need to be... Shall we go to the next slide, please? Yes. I don't know whether it's visible for you there. Yes, it is visible. In every church, every group, there can be different kinds of people. We group them at least. Some are pessimistic, some are optimistic, some are realistic. We need them all, <laughs> isn't it? The strength of the church cannot be calculated or measured by the seating capacity of the church. That's what Rick Warren says. You know that book, Purpose Driven Life and Purpose Driven uh, Church. The strength of the church is not measured on the basis of the seating capacity of the church, then what? The strength of the church is measured on the basis of sending capacity of the church. Amen? And free Methodist, we have sent out missionaries everywhere, India and other countries. So we are a missional church. And so we need to be proud of that we are part of this great movement and we are yet to cross several things. But today the situation has changed, my dear friends, you will agree with me. The globe has come around us. That's what Dr. Bishop Matt Thomas, I've been always taking a bishop, sending somebody all the way from there, fine. But they have come here in our own thing. What are we doing to the neighborhood? Can we do something? I think there is, I saw in the program, there's going to be a specific action plan for you. Pastor will guide you. How can we make this vision of spreading, sharing, connecting the people around? I'm a man who is known for connectional director. I just relate to people. I go to a haircutting shop, I connect with them. I ask them, where are you from? Do you believe it or not, I take a photo with them. Who will ever care of those kind of people, isn't it? But as a church, we can care for everybody. Next slide, please. <clears throat> there we find, um, we talk about now 5G. Those days, in my childhood, we cannot have phone on our hand, and everybody didn't have access. We have to walk through three miles. There is a post office or a telegraph office. You book, you call it trunk call. You wait for the phone to come and speak. You never had that kind of experience, maybe, here. Yeah. You hold the whole world in your hand. So when I brought my old phone here, Indian phone, they said, I want to buy a SIM. Hey, this won't work here. Oh, mine. Well, how can I connect with people? You buy 5G. So when I went ahead with this 5G, God gave me this 5G. Next slide. Shall we say it together? Read out. Grow. Then? Glow, yes, give, glorify. You are all having 5G? <laughs> God wants you to be grow, no, to, to be like Him. Amen? We want to grow. We want to glow as a light of the world. We need to go. 
If some of you are studying the word in Matthew Gospel alone, you can go and count it for yourself. 700 times the word go is there. Go here, go there, go there and so on. So go is not an option for his disciples. Go is an imperative. It's a command. Some of you may be in Navy or Army will say, send us his attention. Go means you cannot say, I'll think about it. You won't say like that, I'll think about it. When the command is given, you have to instant obey. And so let me go on with the slides, please. Today I want you to keep thinking about some of this question. I was praying for the church. I don't know Craig before. Such a wonderful pastor your God has been communicating. Only I couldn't match up with his own speed because I was traveling. Uh, in this uh, state itself, I've traveled almost seven states now, seven uh, things. So, but that's not an excuse. But then look at here. This question, God helped me to ask myself first and place before you that you will be in your own study group, continue to think about it. What the first one is telling is, are we a listening community or leading community? Do we listen? I see a lot of prayer efforts are going on here. Even Bishop, new Bishop, Shiri Shahale, and we are all um, uh, kind of committed to pray once a year called Daniel Fast, Daniel 21. And every we have aspects we pray. But then when we say about prayer, my dear friends, humbly I want to suggest to you, pray not until God hears your prayer, but pray until you hear God. Amen? We need to hear God. That's what you're going to see. Are we a practicing uh, uh, peacemaking community, correct? You know the news, I don't have to tell anything about what is happening around the globe. But when those things we hear, can we take a step to bring peace? I have a friend of mine in Delhi, Kennedy is name, he was a director for FICO, but then God called him to go over to Afghanistan and he's working among the people. There were times that he had to even come back for a life, but he did not come immediately, he started all his stuff, uh, sent safely, then he came back. But after some time again he said, things change, I'm going there because God called me, bringing peace. And we as a peacemaking community should be involved. Peacemaking, or we, a worshipping community, wonderful praise and worship that you had. I'm sorry, it may not be enough because we have time control, we can have sing song, we can continue to worship. Asbury revival, you heard about it, correct? How many days? I was told, I was there a couple of days ago, only 7,500 people, the whole city of town of Asbury, 50,000 people visited during that revival. Nobody planned for it, nobody organized this, Holy Spirit continued. And I said, hey, don't stop the revival there, it should flow all over the world. It should come all the way to Seattle, it should go to India. So we need to be involved in worshipping, delivering community. How many of you are PhD doctors here? Shall I see the hands, please? See, I'm a free man, I'll be asking some questions. You're all not free Methodists? Come on, how many have you done PhD here? One, two, three, four, wonderful. I am a humorous person. Somebody said, hey, come on, he loves, she loves jokes and all. In our country, PhD means permanently head damaged. <laughs> aha, aha, you're happy. But biblically, God sent you and me to be involved in preaching, to be involved in healing, to be involved in delivering. Delivering people, ministry of deliverance. So you're all PhD, isn't it? We are sent by God to preach, to heal, to deliver. My question here is, are we demonstrating it in our own day-to-day -day life? Are we caring and sharing community? How do we care? While coming, Pastor Vinay was told, hey, look at that, the homeless people that are there. I was coming in the car, I couldn't get down and do anything. I was like, oh. Compassion is not just feeling just sorry about it. Compassion word is something like, your pain in my heart. We take others' pain in our heart. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated, isn't it? So we are called to be a caring community and a sharing community, witnessing and sending community. I see a lot of display here, good God's word. Thank you, Craig, thank you, team, very nice. I like to look for a boat somewhere from this first primitive church. These are the missionaries have been sent to different countries of the world, to Africa, to India, to like that. Make a list, we celebrate. And every time the church should be doing that aspect, sending into the world. Are we praying and supporting community? As you contemplate this question in the days to come, God will reveal to you how and what way we should impact the nations around it. Let's go to the next slide. Well, the scripture portion was very beautifully read. You know the story. 
what had happened in the story, I don't have to explain it. But I want to just place before you a few things. Um, I have to come back because I couldn't read from there, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> the prophet Elijah declared something in his time from the Lord. And he declared not a very good news at that time. He said, three years, not going to be rain. That's not a good news, isn't it? Sometimes, friends, we preachers, we pastors want to only say good words, God bless you, God prosper you. Mita mita, he said in Hindi. You know, sweet, sweet words. But then a faithful servant will not make any effort to give a soothing words to you, but will declare what God wants us to declare. It may be offending to somebody. It may be hurting to somebody. But I think, tell you, that prophet told, you know, the story. And then very interesting is, how many of you love to be fed by the raven? Will you? Oh, we will not. But, but then look at God's way of doing things. He is feeding his servant through a raven. And that too, very beautiful, you know, uh, uh, enjoyable food like, uh, I don't know how to describe in your own language, chicken, huh? <laughs> or mutton. Okay, let's go on. Uh, then uh, the prophet also had to rush to run to the other place seeking help. We went to a, whose house? Richest person in that community. A millionaire's house. No, no, no. God sent him to a widow. From a widow, what thing can happen? And she was selling only last dough I have. Myself and my son will eat and die. God's wonderful way, you know the story again, is multiplied. When we obey the Lord, when we love the Lord, when we connect it, it is not just a growing, it will multiplication. If I have a seminar, I can go through and demonstrate it. Let's go on to the next slide, please. The prophet faces a challenge. In God's work, missionaries must be able to face the challenges. The challenge was the home from where he got shelter and help and food, that boy dies. It is impossible thing before him, task before him. But he cried unto the Lord, and you know what had happened. Let's go to the next slide, next slide, please. Yeah, the lady could say, now I know, now I know, you are the man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is truth, nothing but the truth. John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth, and truth what will do? Truth shall set you free. We free Methodists must own this scripture. We are called to share the truth. And the truth will setting people free all over, whether it is in India, Africa, anywhere elsewhere. Let's go on, brother. Next one. Uh, what is the vision beyond 2023? Again, very to save the time, I'm waiting for a time to tell me when I should stop. Look at here. Leap, weep, seek, speak, and reap and restore. These are the steps God is revealing to us these days. Let us leap into the future. Let us not be content and satisfied what is happening now. We need to do much more than what you are doing. Multiplication should take place. God is coming soon. So let us take this password. Next, please. From Acts 30, chapter 13, 1 to 3. It's a familiar passage to most of us. I want to just conclude with this, because time is short. When they were fasting and praying in church at Antioch, I want to ask you a simple question. You don't have to tell me now, but you think through in your heart. When was the last time when you fasted and prayed, in which you heard the Lord speaking to you. The Holy Spirit telling you something that you should do. That's what my first point is here. God spoke, Holy Spirit spoke, to set apart the best one. Today the piano is, the musician here, oh my. Pastor, if God says, please send them out to India, you'll say, no, they are our piano is. <laughs> They're the best ones. How can we do that? That's what naturally thing. Paul and Barnabas are the best one in the church. The Holy Spirit revealed and says, send them, set apart for the ministry that I called them. The church immediately called the committee meeting, the council meeting to discuss about it, how much it will cost, whether it will say, no, 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 no. They just obeyed immediately. They laid the hand and sent them. They obeyed the Holy Spirit. Sending. Sending is a primary responsibility. I don't have a slide there, but I know the scripture was read to you. The resurrection commission of the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 20, 21, we read, when he appeared before the disciples, peace be with you, and he said, as the Father sent me, I am sending you. We are representatives sent by God himself to this world. Wherever he sends. These days, not from one place to one place alone, from anywhere to everywhere, from everywhere to anywhere. 
global village has become zoom has come friends god is reminding us today we as a church will set apart as the holy spirit prompts us we'll send we cannot simply send them we have to spend on them isn't it we need to support them definitely and we need to definitely submit to the total will of god whichever direction they should go with this i think i should stop because the time is up and i want to just reflect do you have some time fine thank you i'm going to wind up two by two wherever you are you just turn to each other and say what one thing that god has spoken to you pray together and ask the lord lord as we are a people as a community who are called to love who are called to connect who are called to even serve tell us what one new way that we can do can we do a two minute prayer like that after that i'll ask pastor to take over shall we two by two wherever we are just share one thought see we go to the hotel here restaurant here we cannot eat all and we take back home isn't it? carry back and today i want to think through what one thing that you will take back home and munch it over as a family and ask the lord to continue to lead us to fulfill god given vision it's time to you for prayer just two minutes shall we two by two pastor we can pastor can come here uh, after that i lead to you you two can pray we'll pray for one minute thank you